All right, welcome back, folks. Today, I'm going to do a great big video all about Farmall H. As you know, I recently picked up this beauty right here. This is a 1946 model Farmall H with a front end loader. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about it, things people want me to do, and I'm going to make just the whole video. I'm going to talk about my plans for it, the issues I've got with it, and just history on the H in general. So, the Farmall H is a row crop tractor produced by International Harvester. It was produced from 1939 to 1953 and they produced almost 400,000 of them in that production run. These were very popular machines. It's powered by an inline four-cylinder engine. Uh, I don't remember the displacement but it's about 24 engine horsepower. And they also had other versions of it, a standard version uh, the standards were labeled McCormick, you can see it says McCormick above Farmall, but they were labeled McCormick. And I believe the H's was the McCormick W4 it was called. There was also a, a wide, there was also wide front and a super H and then a high crop H. So. This machine is a 1946. This is a later one. And there were differences between early and later ones. One of the big ones, there the big differences is uh, set up to run kerosene or distillate fuels instead of gasoline. They had a different manifold and they had like a second tank around here that would house gasoline that you'd use to start the tractor and warm it up on. And then the big tank would be whatever other fuel you're running, and then they both can join to a, a single bowl, glass bowl. And then when you're ready to start running your other fuel, you would switch, switch over to it. This is a gasoline only one, because it's a later one. Another big difference was the coil spark setup. This is obviously a 12-volt uh, battery ignition. It would have originally been 6-volt, but early ones had a magneto instead of electronic ignition from a battery. And there are other little differences in things between the different ages. Uh, tractors set up to run other types of fuels would have a shutter set up that closes up the radiator because they usually need to run hotter to run those fuels. Uh, this obviously doesn't have it being a gasoline only tractor but that hole right there in the casting there would have been part of that's where the linkage for those shutters would have gone. It's just kind of there at this point. Uh, belt pulley. That seemed to be a pretty standard option on these. I have mine off because it's no good. It's all. It sat outside and the top of it ballooned out and rotted away. So I need to find a replacement for it. They're out there. I'll find one eventually. And then PTO. Pretty standard on almost all of them. There was an early type of PTO that had issues. This is not that type. The reason you can tell is because it sticks out from the rest of the transmission. Early ones didn't stick out from the transmission as far as the housing. Uh, but now, 
let's get to the specifics on my H here. So, like I said, this is a 46 model. I don't know the exact month or anything, but... And it was fitted with this loader. This is a New Idea horn loader, type H5. Uh, serial number 60666. And I think the thing is, it's not exactly what it would have been from the factory. There's some little, oh, it's not little, it's the whole hydraulic cylinder setup is not what the uh, loader, the H5 horn loader would have had on it online. You can see these mounts here uh, would have gone up and back. And then the cylinders would have faced backwards and they wouldn't have had a cable. They would have mounted to a framing that went from that point, these points here, up and then up to those mounts on the front there. And they pushed up on that. And even stranger, they were actually like double cylinders. There was a cylinder inside of the other. And that allowed for even more height. Let's see, I've ended up with this. I'm guessing it's some sort of a cobble between two loaders because it's really too well built to be homemade. Well, well these cylinders are kind of too well built to be homemade. Plus, I have a whole spare set of cylinders with the cables and the mountings and everything to go on the tractor. So, I'm not really sure what to think about that. <laughs> no, the hydraulics is right here. This rod that goes up here. Yeah, pull it to raise it and push it down to lower it. And the bucket's a mechanical release, as is most of them from this time. <laughs> Full hydraulics was not common on these for that time. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen one with full hydraulics. <sighs> one of the things about this loader, I think, is that it's probably been on the tractor since it was new. And the reason I say that is because you look at the front grill and it's a bit of rust, but do you see any dents in that? Me neither. And uh, these grills are really prone to just getting dented up real bad from hitting stuff. But you can see there's not really a single dent anywhere in this hood or this grill and that's because having the loader would have prevented you from getting close enough to something to hit the grill or the rest of the hood for that fact with anything with the tractor I've never quite understood what this panel down here is for but this panel is removable I haven't pulled it off. I don't need any. Don't need to pull it off or anything. I prefer it there, left on. So obviously, no. The tractor is pretty rust-free, other than the loader. I don't know why they didn't paint these loaders. It doesn't seem like they ever painted them. There's a few minor rust spots here and there. A little bit around that bolt. The worst, the worst thing, really, is this crack right there. That's where one of the one of the uh, latches that holds the hood down is. So I guess I can kind of understand why that cracked. Other than that, it's really quite solid. Just you know, covered in lichens at this point. I've never tried to crank start it. <laughs> I know you can. Because <laughs> I've seen it done with one before. But yeah. So, uh. 
What have I done to this since I bought it? Well, since I bought it, <laughs> I really haven't done much other than, of course, getting it running. That was the big step. Uh, I changed the oil in it. That was a task and a half. Mostly because I didn't really know how to fill it. I ended up having to slowly dump all six quarts of oil in through the return on this filter housing. I did replace the filter. In fact, the old one's sitting down there. Oh yeah, that's a plastic battery box that was on this. That was the first thing to go. I said no. I do not want a plastic battery box on this. Supposedly this plug right here is actually the oil fill, but I cannot confirm. So I didn't didn't use it. it. Didn't really look like the oil fill. It actually looked like a coolant passage to me when I opened it, but it may not have been. I have no idea. <laughs> And uh, I rebuilt the carburetor. You can kind of tell all of the screws and stuff are kind of shiny. So I did them up on the wire wheel. It used to leak real bad. I see it leaks a little bit. It's probably because it's so cold. It ain't too bad though, really. I do see a problem. It almost looks like I see fuel getting into the throttle shaft. Uh, that's something I'll have to check out. But, yeah. Rebuilt carburetor. Not much else to that. Of course, the, the battery is not the battery I had on, I had on it battery I had was dead. <sighs> I added the slow moving vehicle sign so I could legally drive it down the road. I mean, yeah, you can drive them down the road anyway, but that was legal. Oh yeah, and I took that belt pulley off too. I haven't done too much to it. Had to dump some more hydraulic oil in it. You can probably tell this cylinder right here leaks real bad. And it's not because the seal is bad, it's just because there's so much rust pitting on this cylinder from just sitting outside that when, it, when you lower it, that seal starts to leak. I just had it running a couple minutes ago and put it back up. I'm going to keep it up because it doesn't seem to lose pressure when it's up. But when it's up, it exposes the clean part of that cylinder and it keeps all the fluid inside, which is a good thing because I want to try to not have to add fluid constantly. I know it's just that cylinder too that leaks. It's actually not the reservoir. I know it looks a little oily on the ground, that's just uh, uh, remnants of changing the oil in the engine. That has nothing to do with uh, nothing to do with the hydraulic system, I don't believe. A little something odd, I noticed this uh, shock absorber on the seat is not exactly original. I noticed it's got a later international logo on it. I mean, it's still international though, so that's kind of cool. I also did mention that it's been upgraded to a 12 volt alternator charging and starting system. A new ammeter. You can see it's showing a charge right now, too. It's above zero. And it works surprisingly well, actually. It charges the battery right up. Let's see if I can get in there and show you guys the alternator or not. There it is. It's right there. And I like the work that they did with this odd bracketry that spans where the original generator would have mounted. Because they did it all without cutting or hacking into a single thing. And the wiring isn't too bad either. 
they didn't really touch the wiring. I think the only messy thing is this. This is a ballast resistor. This is kind of zip tied to the coil, but the zip tie broke. And I think I might replace the coil for an internally resisted coil and get rid of that entirely. So what are the problems I've been having? The problems? Well, not too much. I think I just noted it seems like fuel might be getting into here a little bit as I run it, which is not a good thing because fuel is not supposed to be getting into there. I may need to see about replacing that throttle shaft after all. The kit came with a new one, but I didn't replace it because uh, the little arms that the governor catches onto are plastic on the replacement, and I was like, I don't want plastic in there. But I guess maybe that throttle shaft might be worn, and that's what's causing my uh, leak there. So I may have to replace those. Obviously the cylinder leak, that's an issue I've been dealing with. But the big issue that I've got with this machine is the cooling system and specifically the thermostat. Now the thermostat, it sits down under here in a little, you can't really see it, but it's in a little housing above the water pump just before the return into the radiator. And they do get stuck, that's what happens, especially when they sit, but so usually they get stuck closed, but it's less common, but it does happen. This one is stuck open. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So, essentially, it's letting coolant flow too much through the radiator and through the tractor, cooling almost too effectively. And uh, for one thing, the issue with this is it, well, it'll, uh, we won't get up to operating temperature like it's supposed to, and that can damage the internals early which isn't a good thing. And then it can also actually overheat the tractor because the coolant doesn't have enough time to circulate back through the radiator. There you go. Here's the, that's the housing right there that houses the thermostat. But so, I ordered a replacement from Amazon <laughs> and it arrived in two pieces. Essentially, Amazon sold me a $40 piece of junk. And they're gonna send a new one. So we'll see, but I don't have too much hope for it. If the old one arrived in two pieces. Ah, uh, but we'll see. You never know. If that doesn't pan out, I've got a lead on a uh, AutoZone part that looks different but fits, and it's a higher temperature, which is supposedly better, better for the machine. It's a 180 degree, and the stock one is 160 degree. So I guess we'll see what happens with that. So that's really the issues I've been having with this machine.
as of now. But the big thing, the main reason for this video, is what are my plans for this machine? I get a lot of requests to clean it up and paint it. And I'm gonna straight up tell you right now, no, I am not going to paint it yet. It might happen someday, but not yet. And here's my reasons. One, I'm a, I'm a teenager. I don't have the tools, I don't have the workspace, and I don't have the time to get this thing torn down for a proper paint job. And you ask why I won't just, you know, clean it up and paint it all together? Well, I'll show you. I can show you why I refuse to just paint it. Because if I do, it'll look like this. There's a bad spot. <laughs> uh, the guy my dad bought this M from painted it very poorly. He just kind of went over everything. Grease, rust, dirt, old paint, the old decals, and it looks horrible. Uh, I guess I can't really say horrible, horrible. It looks okay, at least from a distance, but you get up close and you can really see it's it's not great and the wheels ain't much better you can see all the overspray onto the tires but so that is why I do not want to paint the H as of right now because if I want if I ever want to do it I'm gonna do it properly I'm do it correctly and properly and I want so yeah, I want it to look like a brand new machine. Not this. I want it to be, you know, as nice as possible. For now, I like the look of this anyway. I, if the rest of my collection wasn't obvious, I like the, uh, I like the old Survivor look. The rust and the old paint, and yeah, just a still going machine you know, without all the rest restoration work done to it. I may clean up all the lichens off of it eventually. Maybe springtime. I'm not going to do it now. Obviously, there's snow on the ground at this point. Though the snow may not stay on the ground. It's all melting right now, as we speak. But, yeah, that's the big thing. I'm not going to paint it. Yet. Who knows how long I'll even keep the tractor anyway, but... <laughs> based on me and, uh... <laughs> I probably will end up keeping this. It probably won't go. Especially since it's such a nice machine. I have the tendency to hold on to machines. Now I think people keep telling me when they watch that video I kept getting recommended to people. Let's put a put a muffler on it or up an exhaust pipe. And, uh, yeah, I did. Did that a while ago. Not too long after I recorded that video, in fact. <laughs> uh, pulled it, drove it over to my neighbor's, and he has a pipe threader and a whole bunch of, whole bunch of old pipe. So we cut and threaded this 33-inch tall exhaust pipe. It's got 32 inches of pipe out from the manifold, with the other inch screwed into the manifold. And I added the 
exhaust flapper on top for the extra effect. Of course, that meant I could put the hood back on too. Once winter's over, I may also take the loader off the tractor. Not permanently, but just for a while. I don't want to see it and use it and handle it without the loader. Because I bet it handles a lot differently without it. It's really heavy up front when you operate it with the loader on it. I just want to, I want to feel it, see it, look at it without the loader on. It won't stay off though. Because I think, like I said, I do think this loader's been on here since factory, or almost since factory. But yeah, that's about where I am with this machine at this point. For now, she seems to be a solid runner. Well, the only thing left to do is fire her up for you. Oh, come on. I just had you running a few minutes ago. Well. I'll have to perch you guys here because it wants to choke. choked and I couldn't do that with one hand because you can see it's spring loaded.